Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm gonna show you how to create amazing skin in seconds with the dynamic skin softener from Nick Collection as a plugin in Affinity Photo. And we're gonna have a quick look at the 1.10.5 update of Affinity Photo. Let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, right after this video, the bonus 15 overlays for my shadow overlay pack are dropping for everybody who has purchased the pro version of that pack and also for all of my Patreon supporters as a little thank you, as a little bonus. And on Sunday, I'm having another live stream. Please join that. It's going to be super amazing. And I'm always happy to chat with you and also answer your questions in the live stream. Okay, let's get started here. The 1.10.5 update. This is for the desktop version of Mac and Windows only, as far as I understand. And I think one of the most important part of these changes is that the raw import library has some new cameras added to that, most notably the DJI Mavic Air 2S, the GoPro Hero 9 and Hero 10, some additional Sony cameras, and then you can also see cameras from other brands in addition to that. Now, some other changes that are rather fixed, as you can see here, fixed, 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 is that the registration is now going through the browser. I'm not 100% sure if this also has to do with the login up here. In case you didn't know, inside of Affinity Photo, you can log into your account, and this will give you additional downloads for different assets and brushes and all kinds of other cool stuff. And when you buy something through the Affinity Photo Store on the Serif website, these will also be able as a download right here through the software. Now, you can see here there's some other changes for possible rendering issues, for background layers being blurred by reopening the file. The overlay paintbrush has been fixed in the developer persona. And also when you work with Photoshop plugins, corruptions of the image have been fixed and there are also some improvements for the help and localization. And in case you didn't know, inside of Affinity Photo is a built-in manual. So when you use the software, hit F1 on your keyboard and this will call up your manual basically. You can search here for anything. Let's search for brush. You can see you get a long list of answers here. Click on one of them and this will give you some additional explanations. Really cool and explains most of anything you can use inside of Affinity Photo. Pretty awesome. All right, let's get started here with the skin softening here. And one very important thing is with Nick Collection, it needs a pixel layer. So that means you need to select a pixel layer. It has to say pixel here in the brackets. And also this does not take into consideration any other adjustment layers you have around. So when you create an adjustment here, let's say for, I don't know, let's say recolor like this, and then you open up the pixel layer in Nick Collection, this color adjustment is not going to be there. So if you want it to be there, what you need to do is to right click and then merge visible so everything is rendered into one layer. And now you can see a half the pixel layer with the red in it. Of course, this time we don't need that. So select your pixel layer, go to filters and then plugins and then Nick Collection and here we want to select Color Effects Pro 4. Okay, there we are, the plugin is loaded and I have created a basic video that I will link below that explains all these kind of buttons you find here, all these kind of cool things you can do with the interface so you're understanding what is going on. Right now, today, we are going to talk about the dynamic skin softener. You can see in Color Effects Pro, there is a ton of different filters you can use to improve your pictures very quickly. So let's click here on the dynamic skin softener. And this is going to be added here on the right side. 
I will zoom into the face so we see that better. And then also up here, I will create a split preview so I can easily show you the before and after. And of course, I know some people in my community, they're experts on portrait retouch and they say, no, you have to do it by hand with frequency separation and all these kind of very complex methods. Yes, you can absolutely do that if you have the skill, if you want to invest the time, but this plugin gives you really amazing results in seconds. Also, I want to point out here, don't overdo it. It's very easy to make the skin too soft and also talk it through with your model what they prefer. For example, here we have a guy and I use the guy because guys usually have rougher skin, but also on the other hand, guys often want to have rougher skin in their portraits to look a little bit rougher, a little bit tougher. So that really depends on what you want to who. So this really depends on who you're working with and what result you are desiring together. Okay, so let's talk about the plugin here and what it does. So here on the right side, you can see we have some adjustments and we have a skin color picker. This is extremely important for us because this means it works with any kind of skin color, no problem. So it's not, it doesn't have any kind of preferences or any kind of limitations. You simply click here on the color picker Picker and then pick the skin color here in the image. And now it knows, okay, this is the main skin color that this is going to be applied to. By the way, another thing that's important here to point out is you can use the same filter multiple times inside of the same work process in Nick collection. So that means if you have different people with different skin colors, you can simply create different adjustments for these individuals and then limit the adjustments just to these areas. I will show you in a second how to do that. So first of all, we have the color reach here and that is pretty important because as you can see, we have these bordering areas where the hair is starting and where the skin is touching other elements of the image. And you want to define how far can that filter go into these areas or should stay out of these areas? So simply use the slider to define how strong that should be. Now below that we have sliders for small detail, medium detail, large detail, and it is really as simple as these descriptions to use that filter. The percentage is how strongly that filter is applied and then simply you can move them along. So let's set everything to zero. And in that case, you can see that the filter is not applied at all. Now, the first step you want to do is to analyze the image with your eyes and think about what do I want to remove? How strong do I want to remove that? So let's say for the smaller details, we go just a little bit because we want to keep most of them. Then you can see there's a lot of medium details in here. These kind of darker spots here inside of the skin that you might want to even out or even remove. So for that, we have the medium details. Let's push this up a little bit and you can see how automatically the skin is getting softer in these areas. So that's very nice. And then also you have one for larger details. Let's apply that a little bit too. We can look over here at the ear to see for the larger details. You can see when I move this around at a certain point, it looks like it's a little bit blurry as if it has a little bit of a glamour glow on that. So maybe just use that a tiny bit on the ear. Now, one thing I want to point out here that is pretty important is when you look at the hair, look at this. It is fixing everything in the background, but the hair, look at this, it is staying pristine. It is clear it is crisp. It has all the details still in it. So this is really just going onto the skin and not onto the hair. Look here on the eyebrow, all these kind of elements. So when you do the same thing with frequency separation or other techniques, it's really going to be rather hard to preserve these details here and still have this really good looking hair over the skin. And this is where this filter is really amazing in doing that. Now, here's another element we want to think about, and that is down here with the tattoo. You can see that it works pretty well with the tattoo, but you can also see when I move over here that some of the finer shading 
of the tattoo is actually softened out. Don't worry about that. You can still apply this because you can go here to control points and you can set the opacity to zero like that. So the filter is not applied at all. And then you can set control points and say, okay, I want this, but I only want to have it in the face. You can click here and resize that. And you can also adjust here the opacity, which means how strongly the filter is applied. Let's go here with 75%, for example. And you can see now the tattoo is unchanged. It is pristine as before, but the skin in the face has been improved and has been softened with just this one filter on the image. By the way, another thing to point out here is when you zoomed out, you don't really see the effect in its detail. And that is pretty important with skin softening. So most of the time when you work with it, you really want to zoom in to 100%. That's already it for today. I really hope you enjoyed that. I really love that filter. Let me know in the comments what you think and see you on Sunday in my live stream. Bye.